Hey, howdy, hey everyone. My name is Jake, and I recently won a Pinewood Derby. Doesn't really sound all that exciting, I understand. But, this was a kind of interesting one. So for those of you who don't know what a Pinewood Derby is, it is a race where you have to take these wooden blocks and carve a car and try and make it down the track the fastest. And there's a lot of rules and whatever else you have to follow, like there's size limitations and weight limitations and all that. Um, and it kind of looks something like this. You can get all these different looking cars. And they range from tiny little skinny ones to big old monster blocks of a car. But there's all different ways to do it. Now I recently participated in one that had an interesting no rules category. Now obviously there's still limitations you have to follow. Your car has to fit on the track and you have to make it to the end obviously because you want to win and you have to be the fastest in order to win. And I did just that. So this was my car this sort of drag racer looking car. I got a little Lego guy sitting up in the front piloting it and if you notice there's a giant fan on it. That's against the normal rules but since this was the no rules category I decided to do it. Um, so me, my dad, and my brother ended up working together on this. Um, my dad provided most of the parts. My brother provided a few things but I was the one who designed the thing. And, not to brag, but I did win this fancy um, Most Creative Car Award. Um, and that was pretty cool. But we ended up winning the race. Now I'm going to show off here just how fast it was. It absolutely blows away the competition. But the crazy part about that is that wasn't even using the fan. This is when we used the fan. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Woo I think that was Andy's car. That was our true It was insane. No one stood a chance against us. And so what I've been asked to do is kind of teach you guys the process that went into designing that. So, before I started designing it, I had a few things that I had to figure out first. Number one was, what did I want to do? Now, since it was no rules, that meant that the options were limitless. And eventually, me and my dad came to the conclusion that the best thing to do would be put a giant fan in it. So, we got a fan, kind of like this one and I had to design that. Now there were a few other parts that went with this because the fan won't power itself you obviously need a battery but in order to connect the fan and the battery you have to have what's called an ESC or an electronic speed controller and that's what that guy is but that won't control itself. It'll control the motor but it can't figure out how much power it has to put in without a receiver and a remote kinda like this guy. Sorry I'm kinda in the way um, so I had to factor all of those in. Now, these ones over here, I had to manage to fit those on the car somewhere. And if we look back here at the way the car looks, you can kind of see some of them, right? So you see the turbine there, and the ESC is actually strapped on the back there. It's that big old black box. But then the battery and the receiver were all inside the car, and I had to make space for that. I also had to make sure that I could fit on the track, so an important thing that I had to account for was the size limitations, because despite the fact that this was a no rules race, I still kind of had to follow those rules. So according to the Pinewood Derby rules, standard Pinewood Derby brick is approximately 7 inches long by 1.7 inches wide. Now those are my main limitations, right? My length, because I have to let it fit on the starting section of the track, and my width, because I can't be just pushing the other cars off. Um, of course, there are other different um, 
size specifications as well. According to the actual Pinewood Derby rules, I was allowed to have a total width of two and three quarter inches before I would be bumping into another car. So I had to keep that in mind. But then I also went a little long with this car because I had a lot of stuff to fit in there. The battery itself was too long to fit on that car space. And so I had to look at the track size. So if we look at this here, we have this space that is after, or sorry, the space before the starting pin. That way I could fit it on there. And it says eight inches. So I knew from the very tip of my car to behind the back wheel, I had to be eight inches or less. So that's where I started trying to figure out other things. I had to have some sort of idea as to what I was going to make it look like. And my main inspiration was this car that I saw at a car show. Is this... I'm trying to get out of the way. <laughs> this crazy car here. Oh, let me get rid of the... There we go. This crazy car is a car that I saw at a car show. And it is powered by a massive jet engine. Which is about what it was like trying to do this thing. There's this giant fan. So I kind of based my design off of that. So then I started getting into my design of it. Of course, it didn't start with this fancy car that you saw here that won that race. It all started last year, last year's Pinewood Derby race, when I tried to make my first version of it. And it didn't go as well. So. What I ended up doing is I didn't have much time, and so I took just the big old wooden Pinewood Derby block, this seven inch long by about two inch wide by about an inch and a quarter tall block, and I designed that to go on top of it. And it was basically just a giant blower. Now inside there I had plenty of space for a fan attached to a motor, that would suck air in this front and spit it out the back and that would give me thrust to help move my car along. The problem with this design was actually this piece, this little propeller. Now all of these pieces I ended up 3D printing on my own 3D printer that I have here at home. Now the way 3D printers work is they just drop little lines of material and eventually it will make a full piece, how, whatever you design, right? Now, the issue with that is that between each of those lines is a weak spot, and with this fan, it was spinning so fast that those weak spots ended up stretching and stretching, and the fan split into like a billion pieces right before the race, and so I wasn't actually able to race it. So, this year, I ended up starting over, and I made the car that you saw. Now a little bit of my design process went like this. I started by modeling out a rough size of those pieces I needed. So the fan, the battery, the receiver, and the ESC. So we got the battery here, the receiver here, the ESC here, and the fan there. From there I started trying to figure out how I was going to make them fit in this rough idea I wanted. So I ended up bringing in a picture of the car that I wanted and then modeling this and arranging the pieces so they would fit just how I wanted that way I could make it as much like that car as possible so if you watch as the process goes here you can kinda of see as I model those and then eventually the picture of the car will come in right there I made a tracing of it and I started lining these pieces up and it, oops, it's, it's being weird. Okay, so I started lining the pieces up once I had them all in there. And once I had them about where I wanted them, that's where I started modeling the body. And so, here starts the body modeling. I started by making the rough shape that I wanted and then making some little 
tweaks to it, making it look how I wanted. And the tricky part here was trying to make space for all the parts inside. Now, with the way it was right here, my problem was the back wheel because they have little nails that go into the body to hold those back wheels on. And those nails were going to go right through the battery. And so, after making all these fancy little tweaks here, like these big old exhaust pipes, I ended up having to expand the back a little bit. And you'll see me do that here in a minute, um, once I finish these exhaust pipes. So you can kind of see me changing the shape of a lot of things there. I also wanted to make that front end a little narrower, that way it would split the air better and also look more like that car that I was using as my reference. And another thing that I had to be very careful with was that fan. That fan was a very powerful fan. Um, so much so that it actually ended up hurting my finger um, and cut a decent bit of it off just the tip like the skin it wasn't all that bad but it was a very powerful fan so I had to find a way to secure it and as of right here it is um, I designed it to just be held on by wire running around the fan which ended up being about what I went with in the final design with some minor modifications um, so at this point you can see that I've already expanded the back and that allowed room for the battery to sit and not hit the axle. And then I had the receiver more towards the front. So if we look here, I have the battery that's sitting in here like that, the receiver is like that, and the ESC is supposed to sit just inside there. But I ran into a problem later on where the um, oops, animation finished the wires going from the fan to the ESC and then the battery ended up taking up too much space and so I ended up having to adjust solve the problem and the ESC ended up getting put right here and that's something you'll see a lot in terms of engineering the process of engineering or designing something is just a bunch of solving problems over and over and over and over again you will always be solving problems as long as you're engineering stuff. And so we've got a couple extra pieces here. Let me get rid of those. And for those of you that are curious about it, this software is called um, Autodesk Fusion 360. Um, and they do have a free version. You can ask your parents if you're interested. Ask them to look into the hobbyist license. Um, and maybe they'll let you have at it and you can learn because this is a very useful software it's a uh, it's called CAD software computer aided design is what that stands for um, and it lets you do stuff like this so another thing I would like to point out here as part of my engineering process that had to happen was when I went to put this on my 3d printer and I had to put it in the program I used to tell the 3D printer what to do. The problem was it was too big because from right here at the very tip to right here just behind the wheel is 8 inches. And my print bed is 250 millimeters by 250 millimeters or a little bit less than 10 inches by 10 inches. The problem was even though it was eight inches from right here to right here, I still needed to print all of this, which was a little bit over a foot long, which meant that even going diagonally, I couldn't fit it. And so I had to find a way to get it to fit. And that's why when you see here, this back piece is actually detached from the whole body. And so you can see I had to design these little screw holes to go through the wheel here and then into there. Now of course this is just a decorative wheel, it didn't actually work. But I had to figure out how to do that. And then this bottom piece here was also another thing that I struggled with. Because I came to find out that I needed weight. So as 
some of you may have noticed if you were paying much attention to how stuff was distributed in there when I took this away. There's a lot of stuff right here in the back, but there's not a lot up here. So if I get rid of this front piece, you'll notice we've got the fan here, the battery here, the ESC here, and the receiver here. Now, of course, this is where our back wheel is, but it works kind of like a seesaw there, where this is that middle part of the seesaw, and it causes a little bit of an issue because we have a lot of weight back here, but not as much weight up here because the battery is really heavy, and the fan, since it is almost right above that wheel, it makes it so it doesn't really play much effect, as, whereas um, this side of the battery here being so far away from that wheel, it's very, very heavy. So what I ended up having to do is right above where this bottom plate sat, um, I had to carve out the inside there and stuff it full of steel to try and weigh that front down enough so the car wouldn't just go woo and fly off the track like a plane. Um, but it worked out and I managed to get my little Lego guy to fit up there to pilot the thing and I got it all nice and secure, all good looking and like I said I ended up winning. I went home with a first place trophy with my brother and my dad. I got a picture of it somewhere. Maybe. Ah, oh, there it is. So there's my brother and my dad and me with our winning car. And just one more time, we're going to watch that race to show you just how crazy the engineering process can make stuff happen. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Woo I think that was Andy's car, I don't know what she got. Sorry, wrong button. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's that. Um, I hope you guys are inspired to start doing your own engineering projects. Just remember, stay safe. There's a lot of dangerous stuff that can happen, as I showed you. Um, be smart, and go design something fun.